Aloha, welcome to Condo Insider, Hawaii show about association living. Uh, this is about 38% of our population lives in some form of an association. And this show is to try to educate both owners and board members alike on what's going on in the industry, what the new laws are, solutions to problems. And we get a lot of people write feedback and email and I keep waiting for someone to say, your show's a lot of rubbish. And no one's written me about this show's a lot of rubbish. So I decided to invite Jane Sugimura to come back. <laughs> and since no one wants to say our show's about rubbish, let's talk about rubbish. Yes, let's talk about the Apollo issue. <laughs> yeah, well, there's an issue, you know, we, I have to say, frankly, that uh, for years I've heard so many people complain about how hard, how hard it was to get a driver's license. They put the program in where you make a reservation to go get your license, and my wife recently did it, and it worked fabulously. And so now they're talking about for the bulky item pickup, to have appointments for rubbish pickup, bulky right. items. So what's, what's the rubbish on this? Okay, yeah, and there was a bill, and I wonder, there still is a bill. It's a bill, seven, a bill 13, and there was a CD2. And uh, what this bill called for, and I didn't believe it, but when I went down to, city, you know, to the city council hearing and sat there ready to testify, I learned more than I, I, I wanted to learn. But anyway, the bill, the bill, and they sent people around the neighborhood board to tell them about this pilot project that was going to be started, and then the bill kind of takes off after the pilot project, and we'll talk about both at the same time. But uh, the the bill talks about the resident manager or the site manager of the association actually making the calls for the residents in the building. And when I, when I heard that and I saw that, I'm thinking, this is nuts. I mean, you cannot have, this is an association employee. How can, how can the city tell the associations that your employee has to make these calls for residents in the building to, to, to pick up the bulky item pickups? And, I mean, and for multifamily, you know, high rises with 300, 600, 500 units, one day for pickup. Right now it's once a, once a month, but there's only one day, and it's limited to 20 items. You're talking, you know, as in the single-family homes, they can have five items. But the multifamily buildings, you can only have 20 items. Are they proposing to charge for this? Yes. That's part of this budget process, and there, you know, where the mayor, uh, there is a bill, part of the budget bill, there's a bill, I don't remember, I think it's a bill 11, which is asking for, I think it's 15, 10 or $15 for every resident to pay. And of course, it doesn't affect most of the high rise buildings because we already pay private haulers to take away our rubbish because none of us qualify, most of us don't qualify for city pickup. Well, just, I'm not that smart, but it seems to me. So the, somebody calls, let's say it's the resident, says, I have a couple items to pick up, and the fee is 10 or 15 bucks. So I'm the neighbor, so I'm just going to wait for you to put your stuff out, and then I'm going to tag on my stuff for well, See, free. the way it works is that the person who wants, well, the way the bill originally worked is that the, a property manager or the resident manager would make the call for the resident, and tell the city, and, and, and there's a, a website, opala.org, and it, it's going to be flashing on the screen. There it is. There's the website. This is a city website, Environmental Services. There's a place where you can either call or just log in and tell them wh where you are and what you want picked up. And you can, there are dates that you can pick that, you know, this is how you make your appointment. They will give you available dates, and you pick that date. And so if any of somebody else calls from your building that same address, they're going to say, oh, but we have a, a you know, this is a date we're going to pick up at your building because somebody else called. And so they're trying to lump all the calls so that, you know, what they don't want to do, what, what I heard it from the city, is the way the bulky item pickups work now, every day they got trucks driving around the city on every street looking for the bulky items, and this is very inefficient. So now they, you make the call, and they will pick up on, so you put your stuff out on the night before the pickup, and so hours later, it's not, because right now you put it on the sidewalk, right? And they have four days to pick it up. 
And in four days, we all know what happens to that original pile, right? It just multiplies because people see, they see, they see the stuff on the sidewalk, they say, ah, oh, okay, I'll pick up, and they go and they add their stuff. Or you have scavengers who walk by and they say, oh, I want that couch. And so they take that couch and they take it off the pile. And so, you know, the stuff that, end, you know, that gets put on the sidewalk is not the stuff that gets picked up. Well, generally speaking, I would say I like the idea of a reservation system. There's got to be some inefficiency of drivers just driving all over on some route. And um, with regard to that, it may be zero on that route, so you have wasted labor, energy, gas, and expenses. So I like the idea very much of having a reservation system. I'm not particularly understanding. Right now, we get bulky pickup for free. So I'm not quite sure now we want to charge $10, and that scares the heck out of me because I'm convinced that the administrative cost, the bill and collect the $10, is going to be more than $10. So the city is going to be losing more money, and they want to raise our taxes more. Well, the way it was contemplated, and I had heard that they were going to try to charge the associations for this. And I'm thinking, well, you can't do that because if a resident in a building calls in for bulky item pickup, that's not a common expense. So how are you going to charge it to the association? Well, I found out when I got to the city council hearing on Tuesday. Uh, Lori Kahikini, who is the director of environmental services, was talking about how they were going to collect the money. And they're going to put the bill, they, they're going to be charging the person who calls, and you know, at that point, it would you know they they contemplate it was the association, and they're going to and and the idea is that you pay before pickup, but if they can't collect the money, they're going to add it to the board of water supply, the sewer bill, which is an association bill, right? It comes to the association, and and council member Suneyoshi, uh, she's the newest one, right? She's yes. very sharp, very sharp. And she said to uh, the director, uh, have you talked to the Board of Water Supply? And the director said, well, no, not, not yet. But the mayor was in the room, and the mayor mentioned that he appointed everybody on that board, and if he told them to charge the associations, they would do that. I was horrified. And when, I got, when it was my turn to get up and testify, I said, you can't do that. You can't charge the association for individual pickups for people who live in the building because it's not a common expense. And if you do that, you're going to get sued. Well, are they going to, I mean, I know this is all hypothetical and theoretical right now, but were they going to have like a flat fee charge or so many per cubic foot or so many per item? Or how was, how was the charge was going to work? Per cubic foot. Per cubic foot. Right. And, so, and, and my, 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 my response to that is, well, a couch doesn't fit in a cubic foot. It, that's what is that? Three feet by three feet by three feet, right? And a couch doesn't fit there. So how do you measure a couch? You take half of a couch and figure, okay, that, okay. that's one cubic foot? Well, let's, let's just walk through one of these from my <laughs> little brain. So I call in and I want you to pick up my couch and they have an average size couch. It's 10 cubic feet. I'll just use a round number. And so they say, okay, that's $10. And I give them my credit card, and I put my couch out. Then my neighbors put out a couch and a chair. And so the driver now comes to pick it up. How does he know which couch and chair? Because I paid for my couch, and they might pick up the wrong couch. And I'm confident, I don't care what you tell me, you know, people see that stack. People are going to add things to the bulky item pickup. And that was one question we asked to the assistant director. And he said that if they get a call saying that there's only one couch and one chair, and the city gets there, and there's three couches and two chairs, they're only going to take one couch and one chair. And that was exactly our question. Well, how do you know which chair and which couch were called in? Because that person obviously prepaid, because you're not so, you don't pick up the, the items until you, uh, until you get payment. And he didn't have an answer for that. But, he's, but, but you know, he said, if you call in one couch and one chair, they're only going to pick up one couch, no matter what is out there. And they may pick up the wrong couch and chair. Right. They yeah. may pick. And so I'm the owner who paid for my couch and chair, and they picked up the one that, there. I'm now filing a complaint, which means I need more admin people at the city to answer the complaint calls 
in addition to the collection people collecting the 10 bucks for the, the couch and the chair, <laughs> all complaining. And then I got to send the driver back and with the gas and the truck a second time when they were already there the first time. We could have picked it all in one big time right. and made it more efficient. Yeah, but, you know, and I think, I think practically speaking, they're going to have to pick everything up, whether it's called in or not. Yeah. And then figure out who's going to pay for it. But that's, that's the issue. We told them, you, you can't expect that if somebody calls in a number of items, that, that same number of items is going to be on the sidewalk when the driver gets there. Because it never works that way. Because the minute people see stuff on the sidewalk, then it, they bring down their own stuff and they just add it to the pile. Or then you put the couch out and you didn't pay for it. And then the city picks up the wrong couch. You said, I put that on the curb because my brother-in-law was going to pick it up. And you took my antique couch <laughs> away. And you trashed it. And that antique couch that had family historical value was worth $10,000. So now they sue the city because they picked up the wrong one. Yeah. I mean, you know, but you know there's a word in the dictionary for this. You know, this description of this business process of providing public services. And you know what the word is in the what? dictionary? Government. <laughs> Government doesn't know how to think through. Sorry, I think we have some good legislators and council members, but it's kind of like, how can this get even? Of course, the good news is Bill Thirteen. That's an unlucky number. That should be the death right. of the bill right there before anything happens. But uh, well, you know what happened, and what happened at the end of that hearing, to, to just to you know cut to the chase, they they decided that they weren't going to allow resident managers and site managers to coordinate the bulky item pickup. And I think it, 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 it was because there was this one female resident manager from Waikiki. And she must have been I mean, very slight. You know, she, she wasn't a big lady, but you know, she was very slight. And she testified that she, she only had a janitor as an association employee. He was 65. <laughs> So it was just her and the janitor. And so if, if they were tasked to coordinate this, she wouldn't be able to do her work, you know, managing and, you know, building the repairs and whatnot. And if they were tasked with also moving the stuff, because the bill calls for storing it in a room, except none of us have rooms. You know, the mayor talked about, well, now we're building high rises with rooms to store. But, you know, those of us who, who, whose buildings were built back in the 70s and the 60s, we don't have an extra room to store bulky item pickups. So, and, and assuming we had a room, <coughs> the city was talking about having association staff move it to the curb. And I mentioned uh, that, you know, that's putting the association employees at risk for a single you know, resident. And that's something that the associations probably would not tolerate because if that person gets hurt, it's a worker's comp claim. Well, what I don't see is right now we have bulky item pickup mm -hmm. and it's in our property taxes and it's free. Mm -hmm. And I think the system's inefficient. I think a reservation system probably will work a lot better if they don't make it too complicated and try to take advantage of it by taxing us more. Because they had a reservation system over time, they'll get a good handle of what, where the most bulky items are, maybe more in Waikiki and less in Kailua, whatever it may be. And they'll, they'll get a better handle on, on resources on how to deploy that. won't be perfect in the beginning. But we're paying for it now in our property taxes. I just say, okay, we have a reservation system, bulky item pickup. And the city will save money because they'll be more efficient with labor, more equipment with the trucks and the, and the fuel costs. So they'll save money, but as soon as they start saying we're going to have fees and all this admin, the administrative costs are going to explode, and then it's going to have to raise the fees more or raise taxes. Or... Oh, another upshot of it was <laughs> that the committee decided that they would not charge fees. So, you know, this, uh, this, I think this council just doesn't have the stomach, you know, to, to raise taxes, so to speak. So there yeah. will not be any fees for the bulky item pickup. Well, you've given me a lot of rubbish so far, so let's take a quick break for a minute, and we'll come back more on Opala. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch, 
uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Cynthia Sinclair. And I'm Tim Apicella. We are hosts here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks, Thanks so much. So much. Welcome back to Condo Insider. We're not only talking about bulky item rubbish pickup, we're talking about the Rubbish Bill 13 that has so much rubbish in it, it's gonna make it almost impossible. But when does this pilot program begin? I know they said they're gonna have a pilot program. I got a yeah. postcard in the mail. Yeah, the postcard, well, it's gonna start June 3rd. June 3rd is when, when, when they will start. And it, it, it affects whole, uh, single family homes and high rises from Foster Village to Hawaii Kai. So when the test starts June 3rd, have they gotten far enough to figure out whether they're going to charge or not? Or is it just like, well, we're going to start this June 3rd and figure it out later? I don't know if they're going to charge. I think, I, I think at this point, uh, they, they probably won't charge. They're, they're trying to see, you know, basically what, what they're saying is the, the way the pickup is working before where they set one date and, you know, people put it on the streets. It was not efficient. And so now they want to do it by appointments. So that's what I think they're, they're concentrating on is the appointments, making the appointments and having the trucks just go to that area to pick up. And they're not worried. They're not thinking about charges. Although I think the, the website still says that. And the website still says that the property manager or the resident manager or site manager has to make the calls for the residents in the building. But we've been assured that that's going to change. The website as of today still says that. So we're told it's going to change. Why the assistant director, Tim Holton, he told us it was going to change. So why, help me what I'm hearing. So we're going to do bulky item pickup by reservation. Right. And it's on the website. Right. But we don't have any plans on how we're going to do this and who we're going to charge or not charge. Well, Who's responsible? The website's wrong. And we don't want to know all the answers, but let's just go ahead and start this June 3rd. Right. That's, that's what it is. I mean, the, the, the website says it's for high rises, the, the, um, the site manager or property manager is the one who calls it in. But at the hearing on the 14th, the Department of Environmental Services agreed with us that that is not uh, uh, appropriate. And so that the residents or, you know, who, who want the pickup will make the call and they, they can go on to that website that, you know, is, 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 is appearing on our screen right now. And they can go and, you know, see, you know, and make an appointment on that website. And, um, and, uh, and, you know, I don't know if they're going to be charging of uh, during the, the pilot project. And I don't think they, they, they would be because they, they voted at the, the council hearing on Tuesday that they weren't going to charge a fee. Well, I think that's probably a good start. You know, I can understand this is work in progress, and maybe I sound a little uh, spiteful about moving on down the road without much thought on this, but it's the truth. There hasn't been much planning with regard to how they're going to do it, and you know, the public at large are going to be confused by this. I like the reservation idea. I think that's probably a really good system, but I don't like, they didn't think, that, what are they, you know, it's kind of like the great hallucination. We have this plan, and this is where we're going to get to, but they haven't thought about how they're going to get there and what collateral damage they're going to create in between. And, you know, but, you know, the, and the, <coughs> I think the discrepancy, too, between the single-family homes and the, and the uh, high-rises, because with single-family homes, you can put out a maximum of five items. For the, the multi-family residences, a high-rise, you can only put out 20, which doesn't seem realistic when you think, you know, an average condominium has got maybe 100 or 200 units, right? And, and 
So for the bulky item pickup, you can't put more than 20 items out there. And we all know that when you put, even if you put 20 items on the street, by the time the driver gets to the next day, it's going to be double that amount of items. We you know the way I look at this. I live in a single family home and I've had my garage a couple of times I wanted to clean out. And there are private haulers out there. I'm not going to give any names that offer picking up your junk and taking it to the dump or and even recycling it in some, in, if, if some of the items you're turning over are worthy of recycling. And they obviously have a bunch of trucks and they have to do their routing and planning who they're going to go when, where, and whatever. The city should talk to these people because I know when I would call, they would ask me, what do you have? And I'd go through my list and they'd say, oh, that's about a half a truck or a quarter of a truck. And they were planning their loads. So that truck that they're going to dispatch to go to these five or six stops or two or three stops, whatever it may be, had a plan. It seems to me that the city ought to talk to some of the people who've been picking up, quote, junk forever and recycling it and taking it to the, the landfills. Well, you know, one of the things about the website, and that's why I urge everybody, it's opala.org. You go on to there because when you put in your items, they'll be, and if it's an item that can be recycled, they'll, something will pop up from the website to say, have you thought about this item? Have you thought about Goodwill? Goodwill will come up and pick up your couch. You know, so, and they have the name of, uh, you know, the entity, you know, to, to call, you know, and, 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 and I think they have a phone, I think they told me there was a phone number. So you, they give you choices. In other words, you know, you're calling us, but what about these people? Have you thought about these? These people will come and pick it up for free. Right, well, there's a lot of, uh, there's one on TV the other night about, People who are looking to help people who are needy by recycling old furniture and sofas and things that you, know, you may not find uh, you want to replace them. Mm -hmm. Trying to help these people with, and, and those are certainly valid approaches. I get upset on a little different note on Opala because I do recycling of green waste. And I'll take it to the Waimanalo uh, land, not the landfill, it's a, a recycling center, and you, they have the bins to put the green waste in. So I'll load my car up with a whole load of green lace, and I'll take it on a Saturday morning over there. And I can't tell you how many times I've gotten there, the sign on it saying, close the day, all the bins are full. <sighs> so then I got to figure out what other place I can go to and get, unload my car, which is usually over at Kailua side. But you'd think of planning, they'd realize that Saturdays is probably a busy day, and people want to dump their green waste and their stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't seem like that this is well organized and well thought through. And I, I agree with you, the condo owners can't be expected to pay for this. And they, I'm saying as an association, and you can't expect their managers, and many of them don't have managers. Right, and, 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 and I mentioned too, and, and the, the, the lady who showed up, she, she was a prime example. Her, her unit, her, her building had less than 100 units, but it was, 86 or, or close to 100 units she's the only employee beside the janitor and you know so it's only the two of them and so if you you know if you have that person you know trying to coordinate the bulky item pickup they won't be able to do their other work that's that's going to ben that's benefiting everybody who lives in the building and that's why it's you know that's why you know it was important to persuade the city that that had to change and they couldn't be asking the property managers or the site managers and or resident managers to do the calling in. That the calling in had to be done by the people who have the bulky item pickups. So Bill 13, uh, they didn't pass on the, that where they're going to charge the associate. Where did Bill 13 go? The back to committee or? No, no, no. What we, they were talking about was um, uh, CD2. CD1, okay. which calls for the bulky item by appointment. You know that's still alive, and so so that's part of the bill thirteen, and that's still uh, in committee, and they're still working on it, mainly because that you know this is a budget committee, and so there are other measures uh, where the where the um, there's a measure by the uh, mayor, I think it's bill eleven, and that's the one where he wants fifteen dollars for everybody, right? You for know. just pick up. Pick up. And in exchange, there's another bill that says, and, and the mayor has kind of alluded to the fact that if you give me the $15 per resident, you know, on the rubbish pickup, then I'm willing to reduce the real property taxes by 10 cents. And, 
and council member Tsunayoshi got him on that one. Like, uh, Mayor, I mean, you said this is revenue neutral, and yet, you know, I'm looking at the numbers, and it's costing the city this many millions of dollars, and, and if we do this, we're only, you know, we're only saving like a million dollars. And so where is this revenue neutral to the city? And, and, and for the taxpayer, the, it, it, for the taxpayer. He had to admit that it wasn't revenue neutral to the taxpayer, you know. So she's, she's very smart. I would watch that person. Well, she's, the problem I have is that, and I, we were talking about this before the show began, I, I, when I ever get time, I'm going to write this article, is that government is taxing us to death. And we wonder why we have homeless and people struggling on a, on a poverty level. We're paying more and more for everything. Driver's license, potentially refuse pickup, you know, more in property taxes. You know, they want more from the investor owner. So investor owner then has to charge more for rent, you know, because they want higher property taxes. Uh, we've got to learn to live within our means. Mm -hmm. You know, and the problem is government doesn't learn to live within our means. They get these big budget, these high in the sky, big budget numbers. They keep spending, realizing it, uh, it's a detriment to... Uh, the working people who live here in Hawaii. Right, and the thing about property taxes that we all pay, including condo owners, property taxes are supposed to cover rubbish pickup, but most of us who live in high rises don't get the city services. And, you know, so, so we're, you know, so in, in, in essence, it's costing us more money than the single family homeowners because they're getting their rubbish pickup for free. We have to pay thousands of dollars a month. Well, unless the CD2 gets passed. We are getting free bulky pickup. Right. You know. Right. Which they want to take away from us. Right. <laughs> and they want our resident manager. And then the association has to bill the owner. And if the owner doesn't pay the association, it's going to fall under Act, whatever it is, 195, the one on the common expenses and whether it's priority of payment or not a priority of payment. It's, it just seems to me it's so simple. It makes sense to have reservations. It makes sense for better efficiency. Right. It'll cut costs for the city by having better efficiency. We're paying for it through property taxes. Do the pilot program, do the test, and before you make any sweeping changes, let this run its course for six months to a year. Yeah, the, the pilot project is supposed to go through February or longer. So it's a, it is set to last six months. Well, I think uh, to our viewing audience, we've given you Enough so you can say this show is full of rubbish. You know, we were talking about the Opala and the problems, and I kind of joke about that and make light of it, but it's a very important matter to have better citizens or better utilization and efficiency for the city. And I don't think the bulk pickup is working very well now because I see things on the curb sitting for days at times waiting for them to be picked up. So I think all that's good. I just don't think they thought through the end game, and we hope they do. And we want to thank you for watching Condo Insider. And we will see you next week in Aloha.